terrifying experience and it was of my own choosing. I ran my first trail run race, okay? And it wasn't just like a little race. This thing was 25K, 16 miles long, okay? So my good friend and I, we decided that we were gonna commit to this race kind of late in the game, but we trained hard and we kind of ran around the neighborhood and you know, kind of on the, on the roads and, and a few small trails around here. But we woke up at 4 a.m. on a cold Saturday morning and we drove over to Meridian, Mississippi. And there's a nature park area over there called Bonita Lakes. It's a nice little area with walking paths and cabins and woods, lots and lots of woods. And this wasn't a big race. There's only about 100 people there or so. Um, but you could tell that these people were a little bit different. They had their own like subculture going on. These were trail run racer kind of people. You know, they were pretty, pretty into it. Well, my friend and I got all of our gear together. We got our clothing fixed. We got our hydration together and we saddled up to the starting line. We kind of felt the excitement and the buzz of the race and the people around us. And then boom, we go and we're off. Okay. And now, as I said, this was a long race. We were planning on being out there for two hours. Well, we rounded the first little corner and headed up the first hill going straight up. And then we saw a little sign that said, turn here. And we ducked down into the woods and went down into the woods. And now all of a sudden I am like running, but jumping and dodging roots and trees and twisting and turning around and, and down this narrow little trench and then up high, high stepping up steps and, and like all over the place, changing directions. And it was wild. And I, I just hadn't really ever experienced anything like that before. My eyes were always like looking at the trail, like, where's my next step going to be? And, and occasionally I had to look up and try to figure out, okay, where's the trail marker? Am I even on the trail still? Because there was turns and things. And I wanted to make sure I was not going to get lost in these woods out there. Thankfully, I did have my friend with me. And we were kind of both watching that. My first side stitch hit right after mile one. And I had 15 miles to go. This race was a grind. It was a grind. It smelled like dirt and sweat and trees and bugs and mud. It was muddy. And so I couldn't even really enjoy the beautiful scenery of all the woods because it was such a hard race. My legs were aching and we were like totally caught off guard from the elevation for this race, like going up and going down and how that was making making us feel. It was much slower than we expected. It was totally different than running or walking on an asphalt road because you were up and down and all over the place. And all I could really think in my brain was don't fall down or eat a tree or um, like fall into a tree, what I mean by that, or how much longer do I have to go to get this 16 mile race done? That's all I could think of. Um, and we did, we finished, we got through it two hours and 37 minutes later or something like that of running through these woods. And it wasn't too bad overall, but let me tell you the trail running was crazy hard. Okay. The reason I'm telling you this story is because at times we just have to grind through things in our organizations. We got to put one foot in front of the other and there's going to be twists and turns and we're going to feel worn out at times, but that's the race that's really set before us vocationally, right? And while we may never have an official finish line, we can keep training and learning and getting better for the next time. So the financial force forecasting that we're going to talk about today is simply one tool or trail marker to help us make sure that we stay on the right path and make the right turn at the right time. Does that make sense? So there you go. This is a picture of me. I've yeah, had it up here. I am, um, hey, you can see my friend, thankfully, is in front and he's having a good time. I'm in the back kind of struggling. In the, I sent this picture to my wife and she's like, oh man, you look pretty rough right there. It's uh, looked like you, and it was, yeah, it was a hard race, but there's a, there's a picture of us on the race. So here we go. Have you ever had to make a big financial decision for your organization, like hiring someone or buying a new piece of software or investing in your facility? And you just felt kind of overwhelmed because you didn't really know if you could afford it or not. Any, any hands raised on that one? 
Um, there you go. There you go. Have you ever looked at an organization, your, your organization's financials and wondered, what does this even really mean? Like for me on a daily basis, like how, what does this mean for me? Like today when I'm sitting in my desk, I'm looking at these financials. I don't even know what they're really saying after all. Or maybe, yeah, there you go. Or maybe you're running your organization just by looking at the balance. I mean, looking at the checking account. Like, oh, do I have money in the bank? Okay. Well, if I got money in the bank, then I'm okay for today. Right? Amen. There we go. I know. Me too. Or maybe you're just hoping and praying that we're going to make budget this year or end up in the black. Kind of just fingers crossed. You know, like, oh, I hope this is going to work out. Well, I'm going to introduce you to some tools today that's going to give you a much clearer and practical picture of your organization's financial picture. Okay. And as nonprofit leaders, we're responsible for the performance of our organization, right? That, that falls on us, how we manage expenses, how we generate revenue, how we meet the mission. That's all part of what we, what we, what we have to um, take ownership of. And so. And, and when I help a client with their financial forecast, they really like this, this kind of light bulb goes off and they're like, wow, you can really do that. And I can actually have like financial clarity and direction about how things are looking going forward. Yes, you can. And we're going to talk about that today. So, um, so before we jump into financial forecasting, though, I'd like to take a minute and talk about the expectations for your finance function or your finance folks. Okay. And I know there's nonprofits here of various sizes and those kind of things, but what I've found, and I'm, I'm kind of like the finance guy in nonprofits, what I've found is there's a lot of confusion and frustration by nonprofit leaders when it comes to their accounting and their books and their finance function. I mean, many don't feel like they have enough financial information to make a decision, and some don't feel like they know what, how to make, how to interpret that information that they do get. And some, are, some people are just doing their best to make payroll every month. Okay, so that's 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 where it is. But there's this creates confusion and frustration with how you set up. Like, how do you get this information organized and all these things together, and to kind of figure out what you're expecting from it. Well, I showed this graphic I'm going to show, I'm going to put up here on the screen in just a minute to one of my clients and they lit up once I explained it and walked it through to them. So I wanted to share it with you guys as well. They were struggling with their bookkeeper, didn't know how to like what they were supposed to be getting from their bookkeeper. They couldn't get good, timely and accurate data from them and, and they struggled themselves trying to get the right information in the right spot. And so this is really helpful. So this. This graphic that I'm going to show you, it lays out the 3 primary needs that every organization has to properly manage your accounting function and your finance function. And so. So, here it is, this is my finance pyramid is what I'm going to call it. And so how I would explain it is there are, there are 3 main roles or responsibilities with to have a full finance function within your organization. And um, they are bookkeeping, which we all probably know that is controllership and CFO. Now, controller could be synonymous with like director of finance or those kind of things. So those are like the different role titles. But each of these functions has a specific purpose within the organization. Bookkeeping is transactional, just coding things. Controllership is analytical or analysis. That's that green there. And then CFO is the strategic piece. Okay? So and we'll, as we'll talk about this, you I think this will become clear. As your organization grows, as your revenue grows, you need more and more of each of these functions. Even though right now you need some level of all of them, okay? But here's what I mean by that. Everybody needs bookkeeping, right? We need that. That's a basic level of coding transaction. What comes in, what comes in the bank and what goes out of the bank? You know, like this, everybody's got to code those things and put them in the right categories. You might have a bookkeeper. You might have an accountant on staff. You might outsource it. You might be doing it yourself. And the main role of the bookkeeper is simply to record what's happened already. Right? Trans transaction. This has already happened. We're just putting this in the right accounting buckets. Now, some accounting functions, you know, you have to cut checks and handle payroll and, and depending on the size of the company, you might have multiple people doing this, but I'm just trying to lay out the core functions of what you're doing. Now, as you grow as a leader, you start needing something more than just what QuickBooks can offer you, right? You, you need more 
analysis and your responsibility is increasing. You have people underneath you, your board members are asking for more information. There's more important decisions that are having to be made at your organization. So now you're going to need some analysis where the control, and this is where the controller or director of finance comes in. You're going to need to know, like, manipulate your numbers more than just, again, what your accounting software can provide. This analysis might be around donors, it might be around historical trends, cost of employees or benefits. Cash flow management, that's a big one. And expectations, why, maybe why certain line items might have changed one way or another. Your bookkeeper isn't really supposed to be able to tell you why something's up or down or whatever. They're just putting the information in there. You also need your controller to oversee the bookkeeper to make sure that they are putting the, the all the data in there correctly and coding the transaction and staying on top of them to make sure that everything is reconciled in a timely basis and and so you're not getting behind or there's they're not junking up the general ledger and adding a bunch of chart of accounts and then just making it messier and harder to do so the controller is that mid-level employee that's really great with excel right that's kind of what that controller person so this is an important function for for an organization as it grows to oversee that bookkeeper, okay? Now, as you continue to grow, you move up this pyramid a little bit, as we're saying, but you need to start looking at your systems. What software do I need? And do I need a donor software? Do I need a credit card processing software? Do I need a website? You know, all these kind of things. And how, and how you work with people and how your people work with each other. It's not just software. It's about business systems and operational systems. How does this person relate to this person? Is this person reporting or, you know, what kind of data do they get? You have, um, and you have more employees that you're responsible for. So you have to have good internal controls as well. We don't want fraud in our organizations. And this is a higher level skill set than just that spreadsheet champion person. Now you're getting to more of a seasoned controller or CFO type of position. Okay. And at some point, your organization, you'll need to start thinking more about how to strategically invest and use your funds, right? How to best serve the mission and enable it to thrive. You'll have decisions on what positions to bring on and when, and you'll need to decide on when to invest in equipment or facility or or a new program, you, you, your board's going to be wanting more information from you, you know, about things and, and how you're going to have a plan for growth. You'll need leadership to come alongside the executive director or the head person there or, or whatever. And so that is when you need to start thinking about a CFO, whether that's full-time, part-time, outsourced or whatever. Okay, here's the real point. Here's the real point in this. All of these functions are actually needed to be completed with your organization, no matter how big or small. And if you haven't hired or contracted somebody to do to do them, they belong to you. If you don't have a controller or a CFO or a bookkeeper, that's on you. I mean, and, 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 I, and I'm not saying that in a cheeky way or anything. I'm saying that as just a, a realization way for you to understand like, Yes, these are all these are neat. I'm telling you from a finance to have a good set of solid books and financials that your board wants and needs and that you should have as, as a nonprofit leader. You need to have all these skill sets at some point in time, but until you grow and you can afford those or have those in place, they really this, these things fall on you. Does that make sense? So, um, and that's just by default. That's just by default. That's what it's going to happen until. So now that I'm kind of articulating this, you might intuitively agree, you know, that you're acting in those roles, but you should also just look at your skill set and consider your ability to adequately handle those functions and actually kind of cut yourself a little slack. You know, I think because you're probably aren't a CPA or you probably weren't trained in technical accounting and financial matters, but if it falls on you, that's just where it's at. Now, you might have a board member that's a great treasurer and that's kind of overseeing these things and helping you with it. That's great. And, and that's helpful for a period of time, but that's volunteer work and they can only do so much and provide so much and those kind of things. So, but I want you to encourage you to consider this, you know, if this is cause, if this function, this lack of function might be causing you frustration for yourself or your board 
um, or, that, or that it might be limiting your organization. This is a specialized and necessary skill set for any organization, and there are different levels of needs for each. Okay. One last thing, and then we'll move on. No matter how awesome your bookkeeper or your controller or your CFO are, no matter how much you decide to outsource or hire or handle these things, you can never really be fully removed from your, these functions and responsibilities. You're still going to need to be involved. And the smaller you are, the more involved you're going to have to be in making sure that your accounting functions, your numbers are right. The bigger you get and the more you hire some things, the, the more you can be removed, but you'll never be 100% removed. And you don't need to be. You need to know what's going on with your finances. You need to ask your bookkeeper what's happening and what's your controller and, and what's going on. So I, I hope that was helpful. Any questions on that as I talk about these different levels or those kind of things? I'd love to answer any questions you might have. Okay. All right. Good deal. Well, we will keep moving on. So let's pivot now. And let's talk about some financial tools to help us get a better handle on our organization. Okay. And this is where I start to geek out a little bit, but it's important stuff. Okay. Um, most leaders, um, this is my, this is my hypothesis here. Most leaders actually try to run their organization through a rear view mirror. What I mean by this is, is when they look at their financial statement every month, the way that they actually measure their financials, they're looking at historical information. They're looking at something that's already happened. Your 1231 financials are a record of, 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 of history. It's already happened. You can't change that. It's a report card on what you did, but that gives you no direction on where you're going in the future. Does that make sense? You ever thought about it in that way? It's it, you can't change what happened. What happened? It's already there. That's what I mean by rear view your management. Now, most income statements look like this. Okay, and this will look familiar in some ways. They show your year to date numbers through that month, and then they'll compare them to the same period last year. Right? That's kind of what we're doing. And and I've even fancied this one up a little bit, which I which I love using. I, I have the um, okay. Let me see. I've got these percent of totals right here, you know. So it shows like kind of your concentration of where you spend your money and and what your funding sources is. That's a quick little tweak that you can make on your financials that is very valuable to me. Um, I've also got some directional arrows here that says oh, if we we're up or down from the previous month, you know those kind of things, right? But this is. This is what your traditional income statement looks like, right? I mean, it looks familiar to everybody. Give me, a, give me a hand. Looks familiar. Yeah. So, let me introduce you to a, another tool here. This is this is going to be the monthly trend analysis. Okay. Now, this is all historical data. All right. But all this is is running your income statement and looking at it by month and putting it right next to each other. Okay. What I would encourage you to do and quick, this is a, this is just a little dump out of QuickBooks right here. QuickBooks will do this to you and I can show you how to do that. But um, I would encourage you to do this and look at this really on a 13 month spread. Now, as you go through the month, we can do this and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll do a little exercise here in a minute, but a 13 month spread. Why do you think I'm suggesting a 13 month period? It's 12 months in a year. But if I say, if I say, go ahead, Denise. To go ahead, Denise. Because some things may not come out or until the a following month that, I mean, like if you paid for something in June, it may not actually come out until July. True. That's, that's True. one thing. That's, that's one thing. Yeah. yeah. But also, and I'm going to introduce you to this, this tool here too, as we look at these different line items. If I show December, if I show January to December, 12 months. I can't really see, I can't really compare one December to the last December. I have only one. And so, so if I, if I show one month for last year compared to one month this year, I can see 
how I'm doing. Am I spending more in this December than I did last December? Am I generate did, did my year end giving was it up more this December compared to last December? You know, those kind of things. So that's the 13 month kind of piece. Now, this is what you would you should do. This is what you do if you, if you run this and you can run it for just six months or 13 months or other things. But what I what I'm encouraging you to do as a leader is to do this and then now review each line item. Literally take your you know, finger and look at this, look at each line. So I'm okay, I'm gonna look at donations here. And I'm gonna look and I'm gonna say, okay, well, July, I had this much. In August, oh, I went up, I had this much. September I was down. October I was down. Oh, November I was real down. And then December, oh, I had a good kind of year in, so I'm total. I want you to run across and look at that. Let's do the same thing for um yeah, and this is a this is kind of a management tool here. Let's do this for facility income. Okay, look, well, six hundred. Well, I have twelve six hundred. That was a lot. Well, but I had a low here. I know my lease. I think is for around six thousand or so. Oh yeah, six thousand there, six thousand there, six thousand. That looks good. Oh, they made two payments this month. That's that's what happened there. That makes sense to me. I don't need to move it, but it just needs to make sense to me as I'm looking at it. Two two monthly payments that happened right there in August. Okay, going across. Oh, wait a second. I don't I don't see my 6,000 in December. Did they not did they not pay me in December? Is it late? Do I need to follow up with them? Oh, okay. So there's my note. That's my management tool to say to use this and say a trend. Oh, there's something missing there. I need to follow up on that. I need to ask my bookkeeper about that. Or I need to follow up with them and say, "Hey, you, you got to pay rent." Does that make sense? Um same thing here on Personnel, let's just look at personnel. Okay, salaries. Okay, let's okay. Well, 38, 44. Okay, that was low, but then oh, okay. Well, this and this is a school. My school year popped up. So now I'm into school in August here. 44, 46. Okay, 47. That's perfect. Right on, right on. Okay, 50. Why was that up a little bit? Oh, I did do some Christmas bonuses this year. So that makes sense. That's a little bit higher, right? And 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 on. Um I'm doing this to try to help you see have a little internal control and oversight, easy way to do this. QuickBooks can spit this out for you to look at this month to month kind of analysis. Do you see a spike or a gap or a decrease somewhere that you weren't expecting? You know, oh, that's when we received Mr. Smith's gift. That that's came and that's why we, oh, that's when we bought a, a, a computer for the employee. That's why that went up that month. Look, if something looks out, looks off, then you figure out why. And don't just rely on your bookkeeper to do it. It is not their job to do this analysis. We just talked about controller, CFO. That's you if you just have a bookkeeper. It's not their job to make sure that the business is operating properly. That's your job as an overseeing that bookkeeper. And there's there might be a perfectly good explanation for it, or there might be a mistake. You know? um, we're just trying to best code. I mean, the bookkeeper is just trying to best code that transaction. As, but, and, but they don't have the bigger view of the organization. They don't know what's going on with donors or with programs or those kind of things. They're just trans, transactioning. But you're trying to make sure that your books are right. So this monthly exercise will give you great insight into the inflows and outflows of your organization. And it's really simple to do. So let's take it a step further and let's put it on a chart. Okay. Here's a visual, a monthly space. It's like kind of boom. Okay, wait a second. This thing kind of comes alive a little bit more instead of just a bunch of numbers out there. I see that. This is the same type of thing. Now you can graphically see the ups and downs. So there are three numbers that I like to track for my clients. Total revenue, operating surplus or deficit, and cash. Those are the three things. And I put those on a simple spreadsheet. Look, this is just an Excel spreadsheet and I track it by months. Here's your 13 months right here, right? 13, December to December. Okay, all the way through. And I can actually see now, oh, well, there's my there's my revenue last December. Here's my revenue this December. That, I did pretty good this year. That looks, that looks good. And you can see the inflows and outflows, you know, of the, for the whole year. So it's it, it just kind of pops in your brain and it's easier to see and it's a management, it's just a it's just another management tool. It's taking that same information, putting in Excel and just charting it out a little bit. These are core metrics, key 
kind of visuals that um, that we that we look at there. And if you have a good handle on these three numbers with your organization, I think you're going to be well on your way to understanding your organizational organizations what I call financial flow. What's going on? So let me pause here and see if anyone is is anybody doing anything like this? And looking at monthly kind of financials next to each other, it's a really simple tool, but it'll really give you a better idea of what's happening with your organization. Do you have any thoughts? Like, if you're looking at it this way, what do you think this would kind of show or help you see better for your organization? Any thoughts on that? It would definitely help me not panic on those low months. <laughs> Right, if right, I right, right. Yep, yep. Well, especially I'm, 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 it's, it's all me. It's all me. It's all me. Yeah, it's all me. It's all me. I mean, yep. this is a yeah, lot. This is a this lot. Is, I mean, because St. Gabriel is small, and it's just, and it's just, it's just all me. This is all me. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is new. And I think that I mean, the monthly uh, spreadsheet would kind of help me. I mean, when I when I tell them, you know, and I'm looking at it, that they are spending too much. They looking at me kind of crazy. <laughs> so I mean, I can see when they're spending too much, and based on what we're getting in as donations and all that stuff. They looking at me funny when I'm telling you you're spending too much, and we're like you say. You always want to be in the black when mm -hmm. you do the budget. That's right. I mean, you know, if you get something to come in, that's good. But when you put it in the system to do the budget, you don't ever want to go in already on the hole. And if you say the board directors is asking me why, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to explain to them because they spent this money over here that I told them they didn't have. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's so, right. Well, that's why this analysis here is good. You're what you're talking about there Mavis is you're, you're comparing this green area right here this is your operating surplus or deficit so are you in the black or not this is saying are you you know are you in the back if you're negative see they're running deficits right down here and then they had a big surplus here a big surplus here they had some gifts that came through which explains why they were up but they're running deficits are running really thin margins like right you know right there the, that whole time so that's your that's your conversation that you say them hey look Look right here. This is us. We're either in the black or we're in the red. It shows right there. But then here's your cash trend. Okay, down here. Here's your cash trend. And so you can see um, that over this whole year, their cash was going which direction? Boom. Right. And so, but then thankfully they had a good year in giving and it went up. And so that's the combination. What I, I mean, kind of you're you're combining your balance sheet, your assets, just in just one number. Most of you probably, depending on how big your your balance sheet's probably just going to consist of your bank account for the most part. And so, watching that and looking at that trend and understanding what's going on in combination with your accounting and your income statement, your ins and outs, is really going to. I think it's going to open your eyes as you look at this and 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 talk through it and try to try to kind of tell the financial story of your organization. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. So now we talked about everything we just talked about. Remember, it was history. It was rear view mirror kind of stuff. And there's value there. We need to know where we've been and reflect on what's gone well. And then we need to might need to shift if we need to. If we're running deficits or our cash is draining down, like, hey, look, board, this is what's going on, you know, and 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 help let them figure out how to help you you know kind of write that and so but this webinar is about financial forecasting right this is forward looking windshield okay so that's what we're going to uh, look at here and let me say in general there's a little bit of some ad advanced level kind of accounting expertise to do some of that you really get into into that kind of controller cfo realm to perform a financial uh, forecast however i'm hoping that after i explain this to you you'll have a really good base of understanding and you can really do some of this yourself or simply just show you how to the good value of this tool.
Um, so, and I, and I realized that some of us are just struggling to get our budget pulled together and in, and in front of our board on time. But, but we can do this. We can do this financial forecast. It's, it's not rocket surgery. And we're actually already a little bit down the road, even though you may not realize that with this financial forecast tool. So let me see your hands. Who completes an annual budget? Who does an annual budget? Okay, everybody got an annual budget? Good, okay. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Laverne. Um, right, and so that's great. We gotta have a budget that's, that's, that's base level and that's gonna help us. That's gonna be a building block for a financial forecast. Who spends a good amount of time on that budget every year? Trying to best plan out, yeah, best plan out your year. Try to figure out what's going on. Thinking th about 12 months ahead of time. Yep, exactly. All right, is anyone only budgeting expenses and not budgeting revenue? Is every okay? Let me ask it another way. Is everybody budgeting revenue here? Yes, not okay. Good. All right, that's good. I'm glad for that. Um, I've had a few people that are still not budgeting revenue, a few clients, and um, I was a little surprised, but we're we're getting there. We're figuring that out. So that's good that you're doing that. All right. So who actually compares? their year to date financials with their budget every you know every month you know comparing your actuals to your budget right to see if you're over and under right okay good am i you know that's that, that's pretty basic that's good stuff it's like okay am i ahead of budget or behind budget expenses and revenue right all right now who who has a good idea okay Thanks, Mavis. Who has a good idea of when their organization's kind of larger cash flows come in or when their outflows might go out? Because we can't necessarily assume that it's just going to be the same every single month, right? You might have, you, you're going to have spikes one way or another. Some, you might have one or two big funders that just always give every April, you know, and you know that that's going to happen. Or you might, um, you know, have a large event that, you know, is going to drain your expenses because I got to put on this event, you know, every, every, you know, November or whatever, those kind of things. So just there's going to, there's going to be these, these big flows within your cash and your expenses, right? Well, if you have a budget and, and you know when your expense and revenue spikes might occur, then you are really on your way and ready to build your financial forecast if you know those two pieces of things. So, so you're already down the road on this. So let's take that monthly income statement that we just looked at, that we just prepared, that month to month kind of thing, and let's add some columns now to get us through to the end of our fiscal year. Okay. And so here, here, this is thing. This is, don't get overwhelmed here. I know this is a lot of numbers, but let me explain, and I think it's going to become clearer. This is just a simple Excel spreadsheet. Okay. And it shows our monthly income statement. Right here, this is our actual, see, actual, this is our monthly actuals. And so we have, you know, contributions and program income and personnel and those kind of things. So, you know, and down each column, right, this is just our actuals for the month. We just talked about this little analysis. Well, now we're going to take it and we're going to go through the rest of the fiscal year. So this is a June 30 client year, right? Okay, so that's the end of, that's their, where their fiscal year runs. And so now we have the actuals for up to up through December, but now for the rest of our fiscal year, so we're six months in the rest of our fiscal year, we got to figure out what that's going to look like to do our forecast. Okay. Now, our first base assumption when doing our forecast is our monthly budget. Number one, our annual budget divided by 12 months or yeah, by 12 to get our budget month a year. Okay, that's going to be our base assumption here going forward. So, um, so you know, this 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 group is raising you know their budget right here is one point five million a year for this line item. Taking that by twelve is going to be our assumption going forward. So we're assuming we're going to meet our budget until recent trends tell us that we won't or we learn something that's going to change or different. So let's look at an example here and we'll walk through this. We have six months of financials, right? Actuals, and then we have six months of budget or forecast. And well, what I love about this is that every month that goes by, you actually get to true this up and make this forecast a little bit better. 
Now, this isn't a church, it's a, it's a parachurch ministry. But let's look at this. This is their, their, their biggest line on right here is church giving, like I said, 1.482. So I can take that number and in Excel, subtract what's actually already happened here and then divide the rest by six, which is six months left. And it gives me an exact amount. That's the number, 120,000. Okay, you see that number right there? Um, now, what I would wanna do next is I wanna look at that 120,000 and say, is that reasonable based off what I've been doing the first six months of the year? So let's see, let's look, let me erase some of this. I'm kind of getting scribble happy here on a... Um, so I'm going to take that 120,000. Okay, that's not perfect, but that's a little bit better. Um, I'm going to take that 120,000 and I'm going to say, okay, well, I did 106 this month, 105. Oh, I had 150. That was pretty good. 140. Okay, 104, 150. And so 120,000 is almost average of all those. So I think 120 is pretty reasonable. For assumptions, right? I think that I think that's a pretty reasonable forecast for me to expect for the rest of the year. Pretty pretty reasonable number. Um, so let's look at the next one. However, the next one is general contributions. That's right here. So general contributions. My total budget is a hundred thousand. And this is going to be from individuals or those kind of things, not coming from churches. One hundred thousand. Well, I've been raising eight oh five. I mean, let me do some quick, quick and dirty math. One hundred thousand divided by twelve is eight thousand three hundred a month. Okay, so so that's what if I was just going to divide it by twelve, that's what I should be expecting every month, right? If I was going to if I was going to be even throughout the year. Well, if 8,000 is my basis, I've, I've read 800, 300, 6,000, that's good. 600, 600, 17,000, that's good. So really, but I can't expect to be raising $8,000 a month based off what I've been doing these last few months, right? Because it's been lower. So I can't put that in there. However, I do have more information. I talked to the executive director and the executive said, hey, I forgot our biggest our biggest donor couldn't get his gift in the end of the year, so it's really coming in January. Okay, that's why I've added twenty six five hundred in there, so I know that that gift is coming in. Oh, okay, so that's this that's where we move off the budget into our actual operational type of knowledge and say, oh, that's happening. I know this gift is coming in. Let me put that in here. But then going forward. I'm basing this future projection off of really what I've done in the past. And I'm being, I'm being generous by putting in $1,500 because we've only been really raising five, uh, you know, 800, 300, 600. So 1500, I mean, it's not overly material, but I'm a little bit hopeful as well. And so, so I'm putting 1500, 1500, 1500, and I'm thinking, uh, here's 15,000. Certainly maybe in the next few months, we're doing fundraising work. We're going to have a nice other good major, major gift come through. But when I do this uh, mental analysis, my total gets to 73038. I put a little, little mental exercise. That means I'm short of my $100,000 bu uh, budget. That's fine. That's good information to have. I need to know that. And my board needs to know that. And it looks like I'm a little behind, right? Now, and, and, and so, so now when I do this, this is the whole purpose of the financial forecast is saying, really, we expected 100,000 this year. That's still our goal. But halfway through the year, we haven't really been able to do that yet. And so I'm actually going to reduce those expectations a little bit. Now, the great thing about fundraising is that there can be delightful and unexpected surprises, right? And I, as the finance guy, I love delightful and unexpected surprises because I love when a surprise a gift comes in, right? And if they do, that's great. We'll add it in here and every month we'll true these columns up and they'll get better and better. We just add it in there. Is that making sense? Okay. I wish I could erase more. This is getting a little bit crazy here. One little draw happy. That's okay. Yeah, that's something. Um, let's see. Let's, let's look, let's do an expense. Let's do an expense example right here. Let's look at, um, 
personnel staffing costs. Okay, this is a this is a big one. So our staffing costs, what we've been averaging, 47, 46, 49, 50, 50, 50, 60. Okay, oh, we must have some year-end bonuses here. So that's you know roughly fifty thousand dollars or so. I mean, we're trying to get reasonable here. So I'm putting fifty thousand going forward. And that total gives me just six hundred six hundred thousand dollars, which is really close to my five ninety eight budget. Oh, uh, that's good. Okay, I'm fine with that. We're gonna rock along. I'm good with that. Now here, what about changes in the middle of the year? What if you're like, oh man, I really need help in that fundraising line item, board member? Can can is there any way that I can I can get some fundraising help? Can I hire somebody to help me with fundraising? It's not in the budget, but we need it. We've got a little cash. Can we invest some of that? Because I'm going to miss these numbers. I need to do that. So here, and fundraising costs. Can y'all see these down here? Fundraising costs. I've been trending along 47, 35, 8,000, 6,000, 6,000. But they did, they gave me permission to change my budget this year. And I'm going to hire some fundraising people to help you. Hallelujah. All right. So I know that's going to increase my costs. So I'm putting in ten thousand dollars a month for fundraising. That's gonna, and that's that's almost double what I've been spending. But I'm going it through, and now I say I'm gonna plan on spending ninety three compared to the budgeted thirty eight. So this allows you some flexibility, even on the fly, to oh I'm, I'm gonna add this in, even if it's not the budget. I'm gonna add this in and try to get it. Is that, is that clicking? Kind of making sense there. So every month. You're going to replace this every month that goes by. You're going to replace this budget forecast number and you're going to put in actual numbers. And it's going to get better and better and better. And you're going to repeat that process and just going to say, okay, what's going on? You're going to run your finger across. And you're going to repeat the process. And say, okay, is this reasonable? Does this month, do these expectations look reasonable based off of what I've been doing in the past? Or is there something that's going to happen that's going to change that? Right. So. There's there's the financial forecast kind of in a nutshell. Now let's that's a bunch of numbers, but let's summarize this all on one thing. So remember back back earlier, we had our normal statement of activities, right? Year to date or whatever. But now we can put this forecast. This is the total of that big spreadsheet of 12 columns. Yep, on the budget side, Mavis. Um, now this is the forecast side. So we're seeing here, we're trying to pull together a forecast. Right, and so um, now this income statement has a ton of new value because it's showing you both where you've been, but also where you're going. It's rear facing, actual, but it shows you forward. And this is just a total of the column of the last spreadsheet we were looking at. It's just the total 12 months forecasted results. Now, this is where it meets the road for you guys. This is where we start getting operational. We can start making some mid-year decisions based on this forecast. This is showing that we're, oh man, we're gonna have a deficit of $31,000. I can show this to my board or to my leadership team and they can be like, okay, we're okay. We've got some cash position. We can absorb that. We, in, we invested in that fundraising person. We understood that. Or we can be like, all right, we, we gotta fix things now. We gotta start doing it. Now I've got six months to start fixing some things, either to fix that $31,000 gap. Either I need to start trimming something back, or I need to find a donor or have another event or something to raise my revenue to get that gap, to fix that gap. But isn't it so much better to have that in the middle of the year than opposed to getting your financial statements handed to you at the end of the year, end of the year and being like, oh no, we have a deficit. You can prepare ahead of time and make changes operationally in your organization to, to address this and be much more transparent with your board and everybody. So the forecast is really an operational management tool for you. So this forecast really gives life to your annual budget, right? The budget is really important. It's, it's one big exercise that we do. We do it once a year. And it makes plans for the whole upcoming year, it makes us make decisions about what positions we want to hire or what expenses we're going to have. It's really important, but then it just sits there. 
and it doesn't change your move. But you know what does change your move? Your actual operations, your organization, that thing is moving. So let's build a forecast tool that can move along with that, that totally respects and is built off of that budget that you spent so much time doing. And it's not too ter terribly difficult, I think, to do, to look at. So now this forecast takes that budget and essentially updates it every month and shows how you're doing compared to the total budget. Okay. So look, we can actually, we actually, level up one more one more here this will look familiar this this might be, be where it connects here with you year-to-date financials historical we got that we said we all know that here's our annual operating budget okay you'll know those numbers too right because you worked tail off on trying to pull together an annual operating budget now and then we compare that to our annual forecast that we just prepared, we just did. So now you say, oh, I budgeted for a surplus of 132, or I budgeted for total total revenue of 1.2, but so far through my right now from our forecast, I'm at 1.7 in total revenue. That's looking good. Oh, I've got a surplus of 556. I'm beating the budget at this point based off my forecast and the exercise that I've just done. Is that connecting in there a little bit? So now we're looking into our crystal ball and comparing how we did, how we're, how we did, how we're doing right now compared to our original plan when we started the whole year in total, in total. Okay, so I'm happy to answer any questions, but this is this is our crystal ball. And this is how we have a financial forecast that's building off our actual results and is built off our annual budget and the activities that are actually happening out there. So any questions, comments, thoughts on this? I'm happy to answer and I've got a few minutes here. I know it's a lot of numbers. Are you going to send your uh, spreadsheets uh, out, your handouts? Um, well, I mean, the screen are... is kind of small, so I had to kind of squint <laughs> to right. see it. But uh, do you have, uh, you know, your spreadsheets? I can I can send the presentation. I can get you the presentation. Yeah, the you. presentation. That's what I meant, the presentation. Yep. The presentation. Yep. I kind of know the uh, how to collect the data. I'm yep. going to try it. Yeah. Yeah. And is uh, everybody using to collect everybody the using data Quick? and then input it? Okay. Are we using QuickBooks mm -hmm. around here? Is that what we're using? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're in QuickBooks. Good. QuickBooks can can spit out that information, that month to month information with you for you wow. um, very easily. When you're going to your statement of activity okay. or, or your income statement, you can do that and and put in the date range that you want. Mm -hmm. And set and then right. put the put the drop down and say it show by month. By month. Okay. okay. Because uh I realize there are certain times when Lil, like you said, that we have more income yeah. uh, that come in. Like I know during our annual appeal, uh when we have our certain fundraising events, uh we, I have more income coming in. And so I've seen where th even those events, the income has went down over uh a little while so yep. you know i've been trying to get them to go more into doing grants i mean uh, to help with the income i mean because the donation has has went down since COVID, our donation have went down so yeah yep. uh, so well this something's got to give yep that's right well this is the type of information that you can show them in black and white and say this is what's going on and this is what's happening you can show them those trends now in QuickBooks, once you once you download that income statement by column, then you know you can export that right into Excel, right? And and all of a sudden, I mean, you get, you really get this information. I mean, you get this spreadsheet right there. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to add some columns for the rest of your fiscal year and start filling them in by line item, and start with your budget. 
So really, QuickBooks can get you half of the way there, which is building this spreadsheet and building this model. But then you've got to fill in your budget, you know, the different pieces, and then the forecast and how how it goes, and just kind of spend that time. But I, I would encourage you. Um, as an internal control, as a review to know what's going on, run that income statement by month for however many you, you are and, and sign off on it, you know, review it, whatever, put it in a file, send it to your treasurer or whatever, just show that you've reviewed that. And as a, just a good internal control that your board's going to love and that you're doing, you know, so just a, just a thought there. Um, well, thank you. And, and remember, you know, being. Uh, there's Cass. Hey, Cass. Um, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Excuse uh, me. I had a question, but okay. I didn't get it. I really need to ask it. It's actually two questions. How do you know when you're ready to graduate from uh, QuickBooks to a more sophisticated uh, system? Yep. And then the second question is my uh, situation is a bit different is that we are probably 99% grant funded with uh, very little non-discretionary funding, uh, and it's prohibitive in the fact that uh, some things like fundraising activities aren't covered in in your grants and things like that. Uh, so I'm pretty new, and so far when I've discussed uh, fundraising, uh, the response is poor, uh, both with the board who will say that we need to fundraise, and with staff who will talk about fundraising, but nothing. Uh, really occurs beyond that. So I guess my question is, what type of financial? I believe in building cases. So what type of financial case could I build to show them the necessity of having non-discretionary funding? Yeah, great, great question. You had two. You also asked about QuickBooks. Can I just yeah. ask one thing? What's your total budget for the for a year? What's your total budget? It's a little over a million, about one million three hundred something thousand. Great. You're a fine in QuickBooks. I have a client that we're at $8 million a year and we're using QuickBooks. Okay. okay. So you're fine in QuickBooks for a while. When you start getting to eight or 10 million, you know, you're probably going to need maybe another type of type of uh, more sophisticated account software, but you're fine okay. uh, up to this point. Uh, as okay. far as building, building the case, I mean, what I would say to the board is like, is, is, is look how dependent we are on this one revenue stream. Therefore it, it really puts us at a little bit of a risk because we don't have any other, if, if this does get affected some way or another, then, um, then we're, we're really in a bad spot. Or, you know, if we want to expand our services or, or hire other people or do other things too, we're going to have to have some more discretionary spending or discretionary dollars out there. And so we're not going to be able to grow with just this one revenue line. On. That would be my, just from hearing your, your case right there. If we want to expand our services and grow and those kind of things, we're going to have to do some additional, have some unrestricted kind of operational funds, you know, out there. That'd be what I say. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, if, um, if, if I can ever help anybody think through anything with a forecast model or operational or financial questions then feel free to reach out to me. There's my email. We can connect on LinkedIn. Um, I also do a nonprofit uh, nuggets, a little podcast show, a live podcast show on LinkedIn that I interview people and talk about different management and um, issues about nonprofits, um, managing people, doing fundraising, strategic planning, you know, building a website, all kind of different things that are that should be should be helpful. And and uh, so that's a that's also as well. So you can see that on LinkedIn. But um, very nice to meet y'all. Thank you for giving me good attention and good. Uh, uh, you know, just help here and, and, and feedback. I really appreciate that. Michael, anything else for us? For us? I think that's it for I us. I think that's um, it for us. Um, let me make sure my mic is down here. Make sure my mic is down here. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's yeah, everything. Yeah, I, I think that's everything. We'll send out the we'll send out presentation. We'll get with Brad. Presentation. We'll get with Brad. And, we'll get with Brad and, and the video, the, the presentation on video, YouTube. The presentation on YouTube. You can check that out. You can check that out. Other than that, thank you. Other than that, here, thank you all for being here, and everyone, go out and have a great day. Go out and have a great stay day. Stay safe in the cold. Stay safe in the cold. Thank y'all. Thank y'all.